and breathe. That's better, out fishing again. <laughs> all right guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all well. I'm down at the mark that we know as the pink house. I'm pretty much right on the edge of Goldcliff. I've not done a video here before, but uh, it is one of my favorite marks. High water, it's in around three and a half, four hours time, 11.1 meters, which in old money for Newport is 12.8 because we add 1.7. Good size tide for this place, anything bigger, and you can get a nasty rip, but uh, we should be okay this morning. I'll stick on a couple of six or seven ounce grippers and we should hold bottom. Weather-wise, not too bad. We have got a bit of a stiff northeasterly. It's quite blowy up on the seawall, but uh, I'll persevere and hopefully I can get a fish. Yeah, it won't be long now. The water is flying across the mud. In front of me, I've got a few small ledges and uh, as soon as the water hits those, I'll be having my first cast. I'll be fishing two rods. On the one rod, there's a 4.0 pulley panel rig. And on the second rod, there's a clipped up running ledger rig with a small size one hook, just in case there's any sole about. In the past, I've had some good fish off this mark. I've had good conger, thornback ray, sole, flounder. In the winter, I've had some good cod and whiting. You just never know, really. It's one of those marks. It can be an enigma. When it's on, it's on. When it's off, it's off. But uh, like I said, guys, I'll give it my best shot, and you never know. Just nice being out. It's what it's all about. And after the tough week at work, just what the doctor ordered. Sorted, the baits are in the water. On the pulley panel, I've started off with half a small mackerel and uh, on the running ledger, I've got a few ragworm on there, but I've also got squid, bluey, and a few sprats. So plenty of bait. I'm sorry about the wind guys, up here it's really strong. The only one good thing about the northeasterly at this place is that uh, it blows from behind you, so it's good for casting. Other than that, it's not a wind that uh, I like. I don't like a northeasterly, and I don't like an easterly, especially on the channel. But once again, that's my excuse sorted. Tidy. Been fishing now for around half an hour, no bites as of yet. As I thought, the rip is not too bad today, but uh, just in case, what I'm doing, I'm casting to my right so that if that weight does move, it'll come around nice and straight. But so far, so good. And uh, later on, on the ebb, as the tide starts to go out, I'll cast to my left. I've just set up my uh, cheapy old eight foot boat rod and I've stuck a three hook flapper rig on it. It's down in the rocks, 20 yards out. Just see what happens, I'll leave it there. I've got a bell on the end. Yeah, it'd be good to get a fish today. Get something on camera anyway. Oh, 
this wind is getting stronger. That's one thing that really winds me up littering. As per usual, the minority ruin it for the rest of us. Don't worry, I'll pop it in the bin for you. It's not hard, it's really not. Dead. Not one bite. <laughs> We're about an hour off high water. Those rod tips, they've not moved I'm afraid. But that's how it goes. I can't do much about it, unfortunately. That's the problem with these uh, northeasterly winds. In this part of the world, it can often kill the fishing. I'm trying long, short, different baits, different cocktails, but uh, nothing is working. You never know, something may turn up. I'll fish. I don't know, probably an hour into the ebb, so uh, we got plenty of time. I've got a seven ounce gripper on each of those rigs and um, they're doing their job. They're holding bottom. I did get a bit of movement on the left hand rod, but it lasted a couple of seconds and the weight settled back down then. But so far, so good. Like I said earlier, I wouldn't fish this mark on a big tide because um, the rip is incredible. Today is probably the maximum height I would fish it on. Anything bigger and uh, I go somewhere else. I just put double sprat on the pulley panel rig. I've done well on sprat down here in the past. Underrated bait, the old Sprat. It's caught me a lot of fish over the years, especially around Newport. Dad and I used to use them back in the day. Used to go to the indoor market, get a pound in weight, and uh, you know they would last us a good couple of sessions. You can pop them in the freezer, they freeze quite well. So yeah, see what that does. Oh well. <laughs> the cheapy old boat rod, the cheapy old reel, 20 yards out, the bottom hook of the flapper rig on some ragworm. This fish, it can't be far off two pounds. Look at this for a cracker. I'll get him unhooked now and uh, I'll show you properly. Right guys, I've uh, just unhooked him. He was nicely hooked in the lip, so uh, no problems there whatsoever. Like I said, he's not far off two pounds. He might even be two pounds. And absolutely crack it. They're so strong. They're so strong. All right, son. All right. Let's get hold of you. Have a look at this for a cracker. That's a proper one. That's my first sole of this year. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy, you know. Oh well, we beat the blank guys anyway. Such a powerful fish. You know, when I was winding that in, I thought to myself, is that a small conga or a sole? Yes, yes.
a bit of news guys in relation to the YouTube channel so as of late August this year I'm hoping to go part-time with my current job uh, I've been doing that job now 26 27 years but quite simply I can no longer look at the laptop screen for 42 hours a week it's destroying my eyes destroying my brain and uh, we're all working from home now it's not the same I don't think it's good for you you know mentally or physically so uh, I'm gonna take the plunge it's a bit of a risk but I'm gonna give my YouTube channel a good crack and I've also got an eBay shop which uh, I'm gonna try and push so yeah moving forward with the YouTube stuff I should be able to bang out a video every single week possibly two at the moment like most of you I only really get one chance a week to go fishing uh, and then I'm under pressure to get the video done you have to rely on the tides the weather the fish and um, you know sometimes it just doesn't happen but moving forward plenty more videos I'll give it my best shot I'll give it a good crack and I'll see what it takes me you know uh, like I always say I massively appreciate the support guys I got fantastic subscribers I meet them all the time when I'm out and about and uh, you know it's those comments which keep me going because believe you me there's been a few times where I've been thinking of quitting this it ain't easy on your own filming and fishing and of course you know I put my heart and soul into it this channel is not just about showing fish I like to capture the scenery you know capture the full experience and try and make something which is nice to watch uh, but yeah you know I've come close on three or four occasions to uh, <laughs> knocking this on the head but uh, I'm gonna keep going and I'm really gonna slam it now from August so watch this space plenty more blanks for you to enjoy <laughs> Yeah, so despite the fact that uh, I'll be going part-time, I'll still be working full-time and working hard, believe you me. Right, the old boat rod is back in action, back down in the rocks. I think I'll give it now another hour. I'm going to um, change the baits on the two main rods. But uh, that's all. 20 yards out it's like i always say this is the bristol channel the water's colored and very often the fish come right in close to feed yeah i am i am casting the two main rods you know a distance oh hang on sorry guys i thought the right down rod was going no it's not yeah the the two main rods i've been you know given a good whack but um that's only because i've got that boat rod 20 yards out if I didn't have that third rod, uh, with the two main rods, I'd have one close in and one quite far out. But when I think back, you know, other than cod, most of my good fish here have been close in. I find that with cod in the winter... Yeah, look, look you the bell, you the bell. It's going again. Right, well, um, this time, guys, I'll take the camera down. Could be another soul. Right. Yeah, he's still there guys, look, look at that. Hear the bell going? We spend all this money on expensive fishing tackle. And this rod today is doing the business. Fantastic. Still there guys, still there. I've just cast that one out, so I'm going to wait a minute or two.
So I'm watching, uh, watching my other rods too up there on the wall. This can often be a good time on the ebb. Let's take a look. I may have missed this one, but um, you know, that's how it goes. Get the old bell off. Line's gone slack, so. Right, am I in there? Uh... I can feel him. No, I think we got him. So number two guys, look at that for a cracker. Not quite, not quite as big as, as the last one, but uh, even so, that's, I reckon he's a pound and three quarters. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> two sole in two casts, 20 yards out. Oh. It's been a really tough session, but the, the past half an hour has been on fire. Let's get him unhooked. Oh, <laughs> oh this one's strong as well. Just unhooked him, guys. No problem again. Nice and clean. Uh, I reckon he's, yeah, he's not quite two pound this one. He's a good pound in three quarters, but um, he's not quite as big as the last one. But another super fish. Whoa, -ho -ho. all right, son, all right. Full of life, full of life. There he is. Oh, all right. What an absolute cracker. Two soul in two casts. I'll take that any day of the week. Right, I think I'll have two more casts. I don't want to go home. Try and get a conger now on the uh, fish bait. I'm going to stick out a bluey and sprat cocktail and uh, see what we can do. Might even pick up a thornback ray. I've had plenty of those down here over the years. Might even get a bass. Fantastic session. You can't make it up. I didn't have a bite for three, four hours, and then two in two casts. Fantastic. And my first soul of the year. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm repeating myself. I get a bit excited, you know, when I, when I catch fish. I think we all do, really. And it just brings back so many memories, you know. I can remember being down, further down into Gold Cliff itself on the point. No, I was just up from the point and the water was, it must have been two and a half hours into the ebb. And uh, I was there with dad and his mate and I caught my biggest ever Dover sole. It was close to three pounds. And back then, I, you know, I, I couldn't cast very far. I was only a kid and a uh, couple of ragworm Again, the rod was probably cost a tenner from the market. Bang, 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 bang. And uh, it got stuck in the rocks because the tide was so low. <laughs> and I remember dad going down the rocks, 
he was only small dad quite short but he was very uh, very agile you know yeah great memories great memories yeah the old uh well, water's dropping quite fast now, quite fast. But uh, I'll do my best to get that conga. Right guys, the, uh, the tide now is ebbing back quite hard. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cast this bait weight to my left so that if it does move, it'll come nice and straight, you know? I can see the rip out there. It's not too bad, but there is a bit of a rip, which you often find here on the ebb, you know? So uh, let's whack him out there. Right, I got a bike guys on my uh, other rod, on my second rod I've got uh, mats on the running ledger rig, so we'll pop this one down and we'll take a look. Yeah it's been going for a while this one, nothing massive but you know a couple of small plucks very finicky so uh, whatever it is it's quite small it may have gone but uh, we'll take a look anyway I think we got a fish Got a strap, guys. Strap conga. Well, it's, it's not bad, actually. Right, I'm just going to pop down and grab him a sec. There we are, guys. A nice strap conga between five and six pounds. I love congas. He took the ragworm on the running ledger rig. That was meant to be for the soul. <laughs> Let's pop him back in. He's gone. It's quite nice sat down here on the rocks, out of the wind. Plenty of water left. I reckon I could fish for another hour easily. But um, I've wound in those three rods now. I'm all packed up and I'm gonna head back towards the car. What a fantastic session. Talk about chalk and cheese. I didn't get a bite for hours. And then all of a sudden on high water into the ebb, I caught three fish within 
half an hour. Two lovely sole and of course that conga reel. Very enjoyable, can't complain at all. But uh, you know, even if I did blank today, I still would have enjoyed it. For me these days, it's all about getting out and being next to that water. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. It's mega appreciated. Any questions or comments you have, pop them below and I'll get back to you. Until the next one, look after yourselves. Take care. All the best. Whoa, right, let's get up. <laughs>